guys and welcome back to another M Creator guide. So today what I'm going to be covering is the custom crops and basically how to set up a workspace with the procedures. Uh, there is a couple steps uh, that has to be done in the um, 2021.2 version uh, because local variables don't actually um, synchronize properly in this particular build but it they are supposed to synchronize in the next version. So we're currently on pre-release, so it shouldn't really apply too much after this point, but uh, just keep in mind when I'm adding the procedures and stuff like that, I'm actually having to add the local variables manually. All right, so first things first, we're on the unofficial mCreator examples. This is uh, the where I upload all my major projects right under the uh, repositories there should be one that says custom crops if you can't find it just search custom crops and it should come up and uh, you want to click on that and then it basically lists all the version info and stuff like that and down here you want this one click on the little image and we can download the files that we need I'm going to save that to my desktop and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize that for now and then what I'm going to do is extract all and then we're going to have a folder with our custom crops and stuff in here. So it has all the stuff that we need for testing as well as examples and textures and stuff like that. So uh, the textures are in here. We have our blocks items and uh, then we have our sound that I have set up the procedures are under these folders here so we have our block uh, procedures a uh, bunch of these other ones conditions so these ones are our conditions uh, normal block added so this is what happens when we actually right click on our block or pardon me or when our block is added drops and update tick and then there should be tall grass as well so the tall grass procedure and then the item procedures right here so what we're going to need to do is there should be a document saying local variables and in this document I've listed all the different types of local variables for all the different um, particular uh, procedures so for example um, right here where it says procedure and it says crop update tick. This is basically all the uh, local variable names that we have to add for that particular one. Uh, again, I did this because 2021.2 doesn't actually support properly importing. Uh, it shouldn't really matter too much. You should be able to import it just fine in the snapshot if you're using the snapshot or uh, the next version when it's released. All right, so let's go and create a basic workspace. And we'll start with uh, importing and stuff like that. We need to import our textures and stuff. So let's go and just create custom. Actually, we could just leave it at custom. Us custom and then we will just create a quick workspace for that and it's going to do its thing for the first time it's going to set up um, the gradle and stuff like that if you already have a workspace then you don't need to do this um, it's just because I don't have one that I'm not using so we're going to just let it let it do its thing and then we'll basically import our resources and uh, we'll set up what we need so I'll cut back in when it's done Okay, so if all is well, you want to make sure that you're under the console. It should say build successful. If you have an existing workspace, just try building it. If you have no errors, it should say build successful and have no errors in this particular thing. All right, so what we need to do now is import our textures. So I'm going to import our block textures first. I'm going to go to our desktop and then I'm going to go custom crops and then textures blocks and then I'm going to select all our stages so there should be seven pardon me eight stages in total so zero one two three four five six and seven so those are our eight eight stages so we're going to import all of those 
And then what we need is we're going to need uh, the items for the seeds and the food item. So we're going to select both of those for our, our food item and our seed item. Uh, after which, um, I don't think we have any models that we need to import, so we can just move on. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is create all our blocks. So first things first, we're going to uh, create a block, and then we're going to call this our whatever kind of crop it is. So I'm going to go just uh, stage zero, just to keep it simple so it's easy to refer to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go create new block. And then we're going to select our cross model. And then what we're going to do is we don't actually need rotation. So we're just going to go uh, cut out and then uh, enable um, transparency parts. We're going to select our stage zero texture. And then we want to move on to the next one. Uh, now you can configure this how you want. Um, generally, it's the height of the actual crops. So I think this is four pixels. So four pixels would be uh, set to four on the Y axis. So that would be four pixels tall. Um, you can adjust this how you want, but um, again, it depends on how you want to set it up. You could leave it at the solid um, solid cube if you want to but this just controls the hitbox nothing really more than that uh, properties uh, we want to set this to plant so we're gonna set that to plant uh, creative tab we actually don't want a creative tab for this uh, both the hardness and resistance need to be set to zero um, we want to be able to walk through the block and for the sound properties I believe I set it up for the um, to make it exactly the same as crops, but I'm just going to set it to plant for the convenience of the um, tutorial. And uh, for breaking, I'm going to set this to zero. You can break. You should be able to break it with your hand. And the custom drop. I think we have custom script that takes care of that. So we can move on to advance. We want to set the tick rate to one, and the default. Um, map color to uh, foliage and then what we want is a reaction to being pushed I think it was uh, to destroy and the AI property should be the same uh, we do want to enable um, MBT we're going to set the inventory to zero and uncheck these two boxes right here after which uh, we can go to triggers and then this is where we can start importing our procedures so i'm going to click on this and create a um, our first stage for our update tick and we can reuse this one for everything else so i'm going to actually import the procedure for the update tick and we want to select i believe it's uh, procedures version blocks crops script uh, normal so this is where all the normal procedures are and then we have the update tick one and then we want to select that so I hate it when it does that all right so basically what this is is uh, before we actually import it now as you can see this some of this stuff is all messed up um, we should be able to save and then go back into the procedure and it should be all in order uh, again if you didn't import the property the the local variables and set them up right then obviously they're not going to work so what we need to do is we need to delete all this and we're going to actually set up our local variables first so let's take a look at the chart we know that we want the up crops update tick one so we have to basically set up all these different types of variables and uh, I'm just going to copy and paste them as they are. So local and we're going to need to add this as a logic um, logic one because it says logic and then we're going to import that and then we need uh, a random number 
and then we're going to place that in here and then we're going to set this to a number and then we need a uh, number growth condition this is a, this again is a number so i'm going to set that to number and then what we have is another logic condition which is this one right here and then we're going to set this to logic and then we have our block state um, block stages so or block states so this one's uh, soul sand so we're going to set this to just block state and soul sand and then we're going to do the farmland and I'm just going to import the rest of these um, quickly and then cut back in. Alright, so now that we got all the different variables set up, uh, what we need to do is actually go ahead and import our procedure now. And you should see all the um, variables at the top here properly link up. So this is good news. Uh, what we're going to do is just save it. It's a little bit out of order of how it should be displaying. So we're just going to save that. And then we're going to go back into it and it should be properly set up. Now uh, we don't have the condition here set up yet and for these two things. So we're going to need to make those and we don't have all our blocks and stuff that we need to set up. However, we can configure um, a couple things in here. Now before you actually link it to the actual green block, just leave it like this. Make sure to save it when you do. Uh, if you try connecting it, you'll get an error, so you, you don't want to do that right at the moment until you have all the uh, things set up as they should be. Um, all right, so what we can do is we can select Soul Sand, and uh, this should be under Blocks. And then if we scroll over a little bit, there should be a Soul Sand right here, and then the Farmland one as well. So what we need is to select our Farmland. And we're going to select that one right there. Uh, our other stages will be able to be linked on these parts right here for our crops. Uh, this has to do with the um, the logic drop thing. So logical drop is has a bunch of script that actually gets run. So uh, depending on how it's basically functioning. There's a script in here that basically tells it to drop and it goes through a whole bunch of stuff. We'll cover that in just a second. All right, so let's save this. Uh, now again, don't link it yet because we don't want to do that. And then we have um, one block added as well. So this is only applies to our first stage. So we don't need to do it for any other stage. Uh, we're just going to select this one and then we're going to basically go back and go block added and then we're going to actually before we do that we're going to see in our list where the procedure the local or local variables uh, are needed so block added is let me find it Crops, condition, not fully grown. These are the drops. Uh, seeds, did I not add it? It might not require any, so let's take a look and we'll just import it and it should be all set up, ready to go. Uh, so this one doesn't actually require any local variables, so we can just minimize all that. And uh, again, if we want to set our delay for how long it takes, we can increase the number. I've covered that in the tutorial already, so we're just going to save that. And then uh, we should have, let me take a look at the procedures, uh, crop, script, normal, uh, drops. So there's a couple different drops for the um, block as well. So what we want to do is we want to set up uh, when player breaks block, um, this one right here. And what we want to do is we want to actually go and uh, go to normal drops and then we should have our different types of drops here for them. Uh, fully grown and the other one are for specific ones. Uh, we want the not fully grown one. 
So we're going to go into our variable list. I know this one has variables. So we're going to search for uh, crops not fully grown. And we have one particular um, va variable. It's a item stack. So we're not going to import that at the moment. We're going to go here, select item stack, and then we should be all set up here to import our actual procedure. So we need the not fully grown one and then we're not actually going to link that right now because we don't have our seeds and everything else is basically set up underneath it so we don't need to expand this at all. So we're going to save that and then we're going to basically link that other one that we just did right to our block explosion variable and because this is the way it's set up um, when it is linked, it will only be X, Y, and Z and world dependencies. So we'll be able to basically uh, use this for our um, explosion procedure as well. So that's why it can be linked. Now, if you have uh, extra script in this one that uses entity, you will have to make sure that these two are separate. All right, so we're pretty much good to go for that one. Uh, we just need to make sure that's saved and then we can move on to our uh, second stage. So I'm gonna go uh, stage one and there's a couple things that we need to change in here. First thing is the texture. So we're gonna update that. And then what we need to do is, now if you were to continue the uh, boundary boxed so it's uh, for the amount of pixels and you want to make sure that you count your pixels how tall it is and then set the maximum number on how many pixels to this number here but we're just going to leave that the same for convenience all right so all this can be left the same um, all this can be left the same there's a couple things that we need to do in the procedures we need to disable that so set no procedures and um, these procedures can be left the same. We're actually gonna save that and then we're going to just duplicate that stage two and stage three. And I'm gonna count all the way up until I reach uh, stage five or six. So when we get to stage six, I'll cut back in. All right, so we're at stage six now, and then what I'm gonna do is create a stage seven, and we're going to basically edit this one a little bit. So again, we have to update all our textures for these stages. So I'm gonna update this one to our stage three. Oh, that one's a little bit too far. Uh, stage three, and uh, the GUI name as well, stage. This is actually stage two. Yeah, so that's fine and um, leave that as it is, stage three. That should be that one. And stage four. So that one. And stage five be five, six, seven, five here, and six. And we just need to update this. And then for our seventh one, what we need to do is we need to set that texture, and then we're going to set this to seven. And then we need to go to triggers. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up custom breaking mechanics for this. So what we need to do is create a new um, one block destroyed by player. And we're going to look at our chart again. And what we need is our conditions for when the um, fully grown explosion. There's this one and there's another one where it is uh, crops fully grown. So we need these particular variables here. This is a number, item stack, and item stack. So we're going to import these right now. This is a number 
And then we need uh, item seeds, which is an item stack. And then we need item crops. So this one right here. And that is going to be a item stack as well. So after we got that done, we can go and import our uh, fully grown um, condition, not the one that says explosions, but the other one. And then we can just leave that as it is for now. And uh, once we do that, what we can do is we can save that. And again, don't connect it right away. Uh, we need to do that later. And we're going to create our explosion. And we need to see what um, ones we have for our explosion. So the one down here is our explosion. Same, by the, by the looks of it, it's the same uh, local variables. So we're going to just quickly import that. Uh, set local, or pardon me, number. This is number variable. And then we need our seeds for our item stack. And then we need our item stack for a crop. And we can finally import this one. So we want the uh, fully grown explosion one. And we're just going to leave it as it is because we don't have the seeds or crops um, set up just yet. So now that we got this all done, uh, we don't need, um, I think, anything else for this particular procedure. So we can just save that. And now we can move on to setting up our additional condition. So this one is going to be for um, the condition. We'll start with the growth scripts or the growth score. Uh, so I'm just going to actually rename this so I can easily add it in. And we're going to set up a procedure. And I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit. Condition, score, growth, and whoop. and then we're going to set up um, our local variables. So we need to find the condition. Um, bone meal score. So this is the one that we need for the score. And we need the score number. And we're going to set this as a number variable. Make sure that's not red. And then we need a block state, so farmland. And this needs to be a block state. And then we also need namespace. So we'll add that in just a second. So namespace. Uh, this should be a string, I believe. So we need a namespace, and then we need our tag uh, string as well. So we're going to set this to string, and then we should be able to import, um, go back and back, and then conditions, and then we should be able to import our score. And now to basically set this up, what we need to do is what we're going to do is we're going to set our farmland again. So we're going to set that to our farmland. And then what we want to do is, because our namespace for the mod is custom, we're going to set the namespace to custom. And then what we want is the um, crops for our plant. So I'm just going to call our tag for this one crops. And then it'll be custom crops and then it's all done down in the script below so we don't need to really do anything other than that. Uh, now we can go back to our update tick and we should be able to set up our additional call proc procedure for the growth um, condition. So this is basically already configured uh, as soon as we imported it. Uh, now, if you have multiple number condition or number conditions already, then you're going to have to basically scroll through it and find the one that you just created and basically set that up. So now that we got that done, uh, we might as well, since we're here, we might as well set up our stages. So I'm going to just quickly go ahead and add all our different stages here. Uh, they're all labeled um, how they should be. So stage three, stage four, stage five. 
etc. So stage four, uh, this is stage five, stage six. And if you get lost, you can always open up the little help icon on the question mark and it'll tell you what one it needs to be. So that one as well. And there you go. Um, the only other thing that we need, well, two other things that we need to do is set up or drop here. So what we want to do is because this is update tick, we can't really use um, anything that is um, basically uses entity because it's an update tick. So what we need to do is for the drops, um, we're going to use, um, can't remember which one this is for uh, logic drop type. So I'm going to just quickly go through the script and see uh, is not stage seven. So is this true? And so I'm thinking this one might be the procedure that we need for the um, fully grown one. So I'm going to set this to the fully grown uh, explosion. So we want explosion, fully grown, and then we want the, oh boy. Um, this one here, I think, and that should be, not sure, doesn't actually list the dependencies yet, so I'm not sure what we'll need for that just yet, but we'll check back in just in, in a couple minutes. Um, all right, so we got all this set up, so we got the stage zero, this is our first stage drop, so every other stage when it's not fully grown and then we have our explosion when it is grown for uh, the logic drop. I think that's how I had it set up in the other one. Uh, we still have one more condition that we need to set up here. So let's save that. It shouldn't be connected. And then what we need to do is our other procedure, which is um, need to find it. Not sure if that's condition. I'm looking for a condition one, so maybe the other one doesn't have a condition. That'd be interesting. Okay. Uh, let's uh, just uh, create a new procedure then. And then what we'll do is we will go ahead and import or just create a new one. We'll call it, um, whatever the procedure is, so the growth light, it might not have one. So crop, light, level, growth, condition, and we're going to import that procedure. Yeah, so this one doesn't actually require anything. We can just link that as is and we can set that up. And now our update tick should be all set up now. So we can basically just link that right there. And as you can see, our dependencies should be saying X, Y, and Z and world um, as it is. So the only other thing that I have to double check is if the uh, fully grown is this one or if it's the other way around if not then just reverse the explosion to be down here and the other one up if it's not dropping the crops when it's fully grown other than that this one's all set up so the other thing that we need to do is uh, this one we need our items for seeds so we're going to create a basic item right now and we're going to go to item and then we're going to select uh, seeds Hopefully that will be fine. And then we're just going to select our seed item. And then we're going to leave that all is. Uh, for the seed procedures, uh, when right clicked on block. So we do have a procedure here for the seeds. This is uh, this one right here. 
So when right clicked on block, we want to create a procedure. I think we might have actually had this under a global. Yeah, it's under a global trigger. It says so right here. So we're actually not going to link anything here. We're going to just save this and then we're going to go ahead and create a procedure and we're going to paste that in or whatever name you want to give it. And we're just going to set the name so it's unique, easier to read. And then we're going to set that. We're going to set this to player right clicks on block. So we need to scroll down a little bit. Uh, player right clicks on block and then we're going to need a few variables. We're going to need the item seeds. So this is a item stack, I think it is, yeah, item stack, and we're going to set that, and then our other two are block states, so stage zero, this will be our stage zero item, so we need that to be a block state, and then we need our farmland, so we're going to have to link up the farmland again. And then we can finally import this to uh, back, a bit further back items. And this should be the seed one right here. And then what we need to do is select our seeds, our stage zero, and the farmland, which should be right there. And this one's all set up, so that's good to go. And then what we also need is our crop. So this is just, the, technically we only need the item for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create um, food item like I did last time. So food, um, crop, hopefully that'll be fine. And then we're gonna select our food and I don't think there's anything that we need under here. So we're just gonna save that. And the other one, uh, we need bone mealing as well. So we'll set up that in just a second. Uh, let's see here. Just gonna double check to make sure that it's all set up. Do that. Um, yeah, that looks fine. So if we go back over this one, we need our seeds here. So we're going to select our seeds and then we're going to link that up perfectly. And then what we need to do is we need to link up our item for our seeds here and then our crop over here. Then we can link this one up. And this one as well, same thing, our seeds and our crop item. And this is for the, um, I believe the explosion one, and then the other one is for the uh, player. So those two procedures there. And then we've got the growth condition. Um, this should be set up. Uh, we still need a tag though. So let's create the tag quickly. Uh, we're gonna call it uh, custom. And then we need, um, what did we name it? Crops. So custom crops. So we're going to create a tag custom crops and then we're just going to delete the custom part from here. Uh, we're going to go custom for the namespace. And then we want this to be block tag. And then we're gonna select all our different um, blocks for crops. And then we're all good to go for that. And then that particular procedure here should work as long as the namespace is custom and or our mod namespace that we put the tag under and then the crops for the um, actual tag name. All right, so that one should be all set up now. And I um, think there is just a few other things that we need to set up. I'm just gonna go through some of these just to make sure. Okay, that looks good. Uh, right click, yep, all right. 
So we just have a couple other things that we need to add. Uh, the first one is the bone mealing script. So um, when bone meal is right clicked on a block. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and create another global procedure. So we're going to go right clicked Uh, bone meal and then we're going to select that and then what we're going to do is we need a player right clicks on block so we need to scroll a little bit down uh, player right clicks on block and then what we need to do is import um, all these different uh, variables here that we're going to need for the actual trigger. So I'm going to import those all in right now and then I'll uh, cut back in. All right, so we should have all the different local variables so we can just import our um, bone meal right clicked one. So we're going to select that and we should be able to just set up the um, procedure. So we need to set this one to our bone meal item uh, this could be pretty much anything that you want, so we're just going to set it to the default bone meal. Uh, that should be this one right here. And then we need to set our block stages. So this one is our stage one, stage two, stage three, I think. Yeah, and, or pardon me, stage two, stage three, stage four. Stage five, stage six, and our final stage seven. So that one should all be set up now for the custom bone mealing. And I believe there is just the when block is destroyed uh, or when grass is double grass is destroyed to drop the seeds. So that should be this one down here. Uh, this is uh, again a global trigger. So what we need to do is we need to create a procedure. And then what we're going to do is go drop seeds uh, grass tall and global and then we're going to set our global thing uh, a block is broken and we should have a couple procedures or local variables that we need to set up so we're going to just set this one to random number and then we're going to set that to a number variable and then we need item stack seeds so this will be our seeds that we basically drop so this needs to be an item stack and then the block tall grass so this needs to be a block state and then we need block double tall grass which also needs to be a whoop, which also needs to be block state and block fern which is our fern version block state again and the last one which is our which is our double fern so we need to select that one right here all right so now that we got that imported what we can do is we can go ahead and I think there is our grass procedure right under this one it's under blocks and then we're going to import that and we're going to select our seeds and then we're going to select our block fern which should be this one right here and then we're going to select our tall grass which is this one and then our double tall um, double tall fern so this one right here and then our double tall grass which is this one right here so once that's all done, we got uh, the properties for what, obtaining the seeds through the tall grass and stuff. So we can save that and let's give it a shot. Uh, we'll just let it compile and then we'll start up the game and we'll take a look at how it's all basically works. Hopefully I got the right uh, system for the, um, the order for the uh, drops set up in the update tick. We'll find out in just a second though. Alright, so I'm now in game and I'm just going to make some room for 
trying this out, we're going to need a hoe. We're going to uh, farm some area. Actually, there was one thing I forgot to do in our block stages, so I'm going to quickly do that right now. Um, I might as well demonstrate what happens if you forget the um, to update the uh, seeds or the, uh, the block uh, height for underneath the block. Uh, if we grab our seeds, which should be under here, and if we try to place it down on the crops, Actually, oddly enough, it's uh, stayed. Normally, it shouldn't. Interesting, because we didn't actually adjust the um, the height of it. So we'll have to take a look at that. All right, so I guess it's not really required with the crop cross model, maybe? I don't know. Um, definitely an interesting thing, because it should turn to dirt normally, unless we already set that up. And I'm pretty sure we didn't. So let's grab some bone meal. And we're just going to bone meal this. And we should be able to get that. And what I'm going to do is um, change my game mode to survival. Just going to break that. And we got the block. So. Uh, Let's uh, quickly take a look at our procedure. Okay, I did look at the uh, script and it looks like this one needs to be the not fully grown one. So we're going to set that to our stage zero one and then we're just going to reverse this. I forgot that I added notes right here to remind me. So that's basically that. I'm not sure actually why the um, stage seven isn't dropping like it should be. Um, should technically drop so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to zero and see if that actually helps um, I had it set to one I think in the actual test environment so I'm not sure if that's going to make any major difference or not but uh, it's worth a shot because technically we don't want the um, block dropping just going to set all these to zero and then we'll give it another shot most likely it was just that procedure uh, for the update tick but I could be wrong and we'll drop that one we'll set zero and then we'll set this one to zero as well and then I'll hop back in game Right, I did notice a small issue. So if you place down a seed, um, like a crop, then it will start pumping out seeds and stuff like that. This should not really matter the, regardless of what level it is. So uh, this has to do with a issue with importing. I'm not sure why this happened, but uh, I did narrow down the issue. And if we go into our update tick, um, we should have um, our local condition up here. Uh, make sure that's set to light growth. And this one should be set to the logic drop type down below. Uh, that will actually make a huge impact on how it's basically set up. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're uh, setting up your procedure. Um, I'm not sure if there's any other errors in here. There might be. I'm just going to double check quickly. And that looks like it's fine. Just quickly go through here. Okay, so stage seven. Um, it's not. So that should be set up like that. And okay, I'm not sure. Light condition. This should be set up for um, something. I'm not sure if this is the one that it needs to be. That might be the light growth condition here. 
yeah I think that one needs to be the light growth condition so we're gonna set that one right there to the light growth condition and um, it should be working as normal now um, trying to see that that and this runs that particular procedure so yeah that that one right here also needs to be the um, logic growth condition so make sure to save that and um, should work normal now so we'll just start up the game and give it a test again all right, so I f figured it out. Um, I did manage to fix the script, and I, oddly enough, I guess when I em exported it, it was uh, set up a little bit differently, or um, when I was doing the tutorial, it was a little bit buggy. So when we break it, we get our... Actually, let's just get rid of some of this so it's easier to see. So we'll just um, throw all this outside, and then we'll um, break a new one. And I'll show you that it basically works. And then I'll just cover the changes that I basically did in the update tick. All right, so if we break this one here, we're going to get our seeds and our crop back. If we plant it, we're just going to get our seeds back. So basically what was happening with the, um, the actual procedure for the update tick was this part right here was basically outside so the only thing that i've basically changed was i brought that at the end of the procedure after it basically tests if the um, block is um, basically running the um, if it's not stage seven then it should return return true if it is stage seven then it should return false and the explosion needs to be on the bottom here and the uh, default seed should be at the top. So that's the only difference that I basically did. Uh, you might have to rearrange that a little bit and make sure that your uh, light growth condition is set up in this particular procedure. But outside of that, that's how you basically set up the custom crops. I know it's a little bit of a longer video, but um, it's a pretty big uh, system to actually implement. So hopefully you guys can now start importing your custom crops a little bit easier. Now that you've seen how I've basically set it up and how to import it and everything like that. So again, the local variables um, will probably be fixed in the next version. So of the M creator that is. So you won't be able to, you won't need to actually import them all manually, like set them up with the local variables. But again, I made sure to include the local variables in the, um, the actual download so you guys can take a look at the variables that I did use and set them up accordingly. So hopefully you guys found that useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.